mentorship is crucial. Yes, absolutely. So uh, I think like uh, I would really advise again, like we have this discussion around 5 p.m. today uh, about the importance of uh, the network. And I think the whole idea is to have that um, open discussion and brainstorming session about the importance of a network and thinking about how to build on top of that, whether for the purpose of entrepreneurship or mentorship or uh, uh, professionally helping each other in general. So let's let's start about uh, the questions. I can take this one. Yeah, go ahead. So this is a this is a question that's near and dear to my heart. How can young people with limited funding, a couple of thousand dollars, participate in entrepreneurship? So I'm gonna I'm gonna indirectly answer the question. Um, I'm gonna tell you a story of a project that we did in uh, not not me personally, but uh, Mass Youth Detroit. A few years ago, this was back in, it, the project started in 06, I think. They had a project called Detroit Minds and Hearts, DMH. I don't know if anyone heard about DMH? One, okay, so I can't make things up. Thanks, Ali. Uh, so Detroit Minds and Heart, uh, the, the, the youth chapter actually reached out to, in an area of, of uh, low economic uh, area, et cetera, uh, but they reached out to the youth and they, they engaged a couple of sponsors by creating, you know, small scholarships, $1,000, $2,500, and $5,000. And then they went to the youth and they said, come with ideas, almost a mini shark tank, right? And allowed the youth to think of ideas that turns into a business rather than, uh, they actually took a small warehouse, painted the walls and threw some chairs and created a, a platform for discussions and said, and they assigned mentors and, and created a very powerful uh, platform where the youth started thinking in business terms, coming up with ideas so that they can win a $5,000 or a $2,500 sponsorship to invest in their idea. So don't ever underestimate. So, so a $2,000 limited budget could potentially be what's gonna make the, what's gonna maximize the impact of an entrepreneur with limited funding is not necessarily the money, but the relationship. As an entrepreneur, your biggest asset isn't the money. It's definitely an asset, but it's who you know and who you share your idea with. Share, figure out what channels. So if your idea is in retail, you need to, to get connected with people that are in the retail market. If your idea is in, let's say, mobile app development, Talk to people that have uh, teams. They may sponsor your idea and actually build the, the, the idea for free for you. So leverage relationships, Lev going back to the network, not to over market the, the next session, but leverage the, 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 the relationships that are required to make your idea successful. And then that funding will not be an obstacle, inshallah. You may find someone that will sponsor your idea completely. You may find a, uh, an, an angel investor and, uh, or, or a, or, or a company that will fund the development or potentially will allow you to build the initial MVP that we talked about, and then they can scale it. A lot of Shark Tank, actually, they're looking, they were looking, if you noticed, for a mature enough product or a service that they can take and take it to the next level. Yeah. So um, another question, which is, what do you believe has held us back <clears throat> so far why don't we have a high number of uh, Muslim billionaires or um, hundreds, hundred millionaires, uh, or like millionaire, multi-millionaires in general? Or uh, are they just keeping a uh, low profile? Well, I mean, there are like in every single locality, again, like I think it's a uh, lack of information that we, uh, that we have. But like uh, I know for a fact that like there are um, a good number of Muslims who did sell companies for 300, uh, 400 millions, uh, whether like technology company or other types of traditional businesses. But uh, if we are talking about what did hold us back so far, is that um, we tend to um, avoid taking risks. I think like if, if, if I'm to summarize it in uh, one short answer, which is uh, it, it's tough to jump ship uh, a comfortable lifestyle and uh, embark onto the unknown. And that's what it takes. Like, it, like there is no investor out there that will invest in your company if you are not showing some sort of a strength, mental strength, and willing to uh, take it on your shoulders to uh, leave the comfortable position 
and go all in. And uh, that's definitely uh, because like, uh, it, to me, it, we are just like feeling more comfortable whenever you have that regular pay on an ongoing basis and uh, in the position in general. So uh, I think like that's in, in my humble opinion, one of the major uh, things that are delaying us uh, in general. Though if you think about um, what did build this country from one side and many of us who were uh, first generation immigrants, right? To me, immigration is one of the toughest decisions out there. Right. So if you are deciding to leave your country, you are already a risk taker. So don't you set yourself back in a sense that um, it's not that like you are jumping uh, the ship too early, but be ready for uh, doing such a uh, such a uh, move. And then like the second question, which is what is the limit of uh, mental capacity and how far I can resist failure uh, of my project? So do you have, do you have uh, yeah, something to add here? Can I have also? I, I think I think it's uh, I, it's knowing when to quit, right? There, there's a difference between it's mental capacity, uh, but I'm just beating my head against the wall. Knowing the difference between am I really beating my head against the wall versus am I just waiting and, and still I'm I. I, I hit the sixth failure, the seventh failure, the eighth failure. Should I quit or is there number 10? Number 10 is going to be the winning one. How do I know the difference between the two? I think it really depends on your knowledge of five minutes, your knowledge of the of the market that you're tapping into. How connected are you with the market? And I think there's another question about uh, uh, ideas about service business, and I'll try to answer both of them is have you vetted the market? Do you know if, the, if there is a market viability for your idea? Investors have, have, an, have a way of, of uh, valuation. It, for those, Ali might be able to speak more about valuation, but people who are in the financial uh, services or uh, uh, audit and so forth, when a company goes, actually Shark Tank, do you remember uh, a lot of, comp a lot of uh, people that come to Shark Tank, they're asking for an investment. So in the back of their mind, they're valuing their business in X. And they're asking for an investment based on that valuation. And whether they're challenged or not in, 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 uh, in the Shark Tank. But what makes that valuation uh, in the back of their mind, th those Shark Tanks are writing on a piece of paper. They're actually, it, they're looking at, based on the market that's out there, how big is this opportunity? And I think in order for you to know should I quit or not? Is what is your confidence of that opportunity? Do you know for a fact that there are 10 or 50 or 100 companies out there that could be customers of yours and you're just not able to reach them? Maybe it's not about that mental capacity maybe should be, so you need to be thinking creatively that rather than continue to do exact same thing, maybe I need to change my pitch. Maybe I need to reposition my service or my product. Maybe I'm just positioning it as, as a delivery service when it's actually an all encompassing to, to you. Maybe you just need to reposition your service based on the market demand. So rather than just continue to do what, I, what you're doing and expect different results, revisit and, and pressure test the market. Go talk to the customers that actually, that did not buy and ask them, what are your thoughts? What, what, why didn't you buy the product? Is there something else? That knowledge, by the way, is more valuable to you than a customer that just bought the product, even though that they don't like it. So get out of, the, you know, get out of, uh, as they say, put on your running shoe and, and stay connected with your customers. Yeah. And probably I think like we did get a uh, few questions about the first customer of mine. Like if I'm uh, starting a business, what is like, how would I lend my first customer and whether do I need to, uh, do I need to take loans or no? Obviously they're like, n why? Why do you need to take loans? You don't need to take loans. And what type of investment uh, uh, or funding opportunities that I need to tap into? Um, I think like my humble advice here is once you uh, have some sort of an idea, try to validate it as quickly as you can. Uh, try to uh, have a sounding board from your mentors or from the people who are close to you. But more importantly, get as quickly as you can to 
uh, some potential first customers. Once you go there, once you uh, have some sort of a success, try to reach that win-win with the customer. And that's, again, like related back to the ability of selling. Like try to, it's all about a pain point that you are addressing. And know it that if that pain point is not that immediate for that customer, he may not be interested in engaging in a discussion with you altogether, right? But if you are addressing a true pain point, that customer may leave aside the fact that you are a small business, that you are literally nothing, you have nothing, you have just an idea or you have a prototype and they would be okay to entertain such a discussion. So to me, this is the first step that you need to do and whether like you convince that customer to use that service or uh, product for free. And again, like we are here talking in a very, ge very generic form. It could be applicable for a new product. It could be applicable for a service, but landing that first customer, don't expect that having money will allow you to land this first customer. That's not the, the like you are putting the cart in front of the horse if you are going this way. So you get you try to get a funding to grow a business when the business actually exists and the business does not exist without you having a addressing a pain point for a given customer with a product that's viable enough to convince the customer to overlook the like the actual uh, shortcomings of such a product and embark with you onto a journey trying to address his pain point or her pain point. So, yeah. May yeah, I just add? Oh, sure. You could tell them about business model canvas and opportunity canvas. They are two tools. They are free on the internet. Mm -hmm. They can go and basically figure out what their business idea is all about. Yeah. I think we are running yeah, the, out of... Uh, yeah, I think we're, we're up at time, but, but uh, that's, a, that's a good point. There are frameworks... Five minutes? We, we can expand for, 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 for five minutes. Five minutes? Okay. There, there are frameworks out there that helps you understand the different pieces of the puzzle that you need to worry about. The business model canvas is, is one of them that lets you keep kind of your customers, the resources, the required resources, the, the, the partnerships that you need, the, 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 the alliances, etc., the channels that you sell. There are several good frameworks that are out there to kind of help you figure out do I have any gaps? Am I covering all my bases in, in thinking through um, thinking through that? Um, there were a couple of questions that touched on um, Muhammad, the challenges of making the first sale, selling, getting your very, very first product. Um, the, the challenges of, I'm gonna try to cover a few questions. There are a lot of crooks out there. There are, you know, there are a lot of people who are selling vaporware that you know will, will take people's money, move out of the country, etc. By the way, those are the challenges that the customers who are going to be looking at your real product, who is not really who, who you're you're genuinely creating, that are worried about. So you need to you need to keep both of those in mind. You need to keep in mind that my customers are worried. So you need to demonstrate genuine uh, authenticity. You need to answer those questions in as you're positioning your 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 services. Um, you don't get into anything prematurely, right? Nobody goes and, 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 and says, I'm going to start making chairs if you don't have a factory, if you don't understand, if you, don't, if, you, if you get into a market that chairs aren't even needed. So before you spend a lot of time and a lot of effort making a product, test the market viability. There are companies that sell research data about customers and their needs. Make sure that you understand the needs to your product you may be, by the way, and I'll keep it on the positive side. You may be thinking of an idea of a product that in your mind, it's worth, let's say it's a subscription product, a service that, that you're going to sell for $50. But you may be under, you, you, might, you might not realize that there's a real, there's a bigger opportunity for a slightly different audience for the same exact service for $2,000 a month. So if your disconnect with the market, could potentially kill your first product, or you may think that I'm successful, I was able to sell it for $100 subscription a month, but you're missing out on a bigger deal. Make sure insights are your biggest friend. Insights about the market and about your customers are your biggest friend in getting the very first product because your 
definition of a first product may be different than what the customer's definition of a first. They may be okay with half of what you're thinking about. So, or they may be not okay with what you're thinking about. They may need more features. So if, if you take anything out of my, out of what, what we're talking about, stay connected with the customers that you are targeting for your products or services. I guess like uh, we will have to stop here, but uh, finally, I guess we need to remind ourselves that it's not just about entrepreneurship. It's about entrepreneurship for us as Muslim Americans. It's about a big picture that we want to make a difference in this country. We um, like, and this is not a luxury or wishful thinking uh, in the upcoming 30 to 50 years, if we don't make a difference, we don't position ourselves as a solid minority in this country, we are not fulfilling our role. And subhanAllah, there is a reason for which we are here now at this day and age, and there is a huge opportunity. So I think like we will stop here and uh, I'll leave it to our amazing moderator, but uh, we'll, uh, inshallah, we'll have this uh, other session about the importance of professional networking as well. So. Oh, so like, yeah, uh, so in the, in the next session, if you are interested in joining that discussion and that group that we will try to put together around professional networking, we will have sign-up sheets ready uh, for, uh, for you to share your information. So uh, can I get a show of hands? Anyone would like, um, if, if you are interested in, in, in that? Okay, so inshallah, we'll, we'll try to do that. By the way, the, the program app, the mobile app for the convention allows you to actually uh, select the sessions that you're planning on attending. And it gives us an indication of how many people are, are planning on attending. So please, uh, you know, cherry pick the ones, build your own agenda. I know it's, day, it's the last day of the convention, but at least it gives us an idea of who's interested in the session. Thank you. Thank you.